Hello, my name is Elizabeth Dubose and we are at Placerville Town Hall for an art and display for the Stand Against Racism event. This is the weekend of July 17th and we are here to show all of the art that the local artists made for our Stand Against Racism event and I appreciate all the artwork and I'm an artist myself so it was a very enjoyable experience. Hi everybody, I'm uh, Michael Saunders. Uh, today we're having an art exhibit called Stand up against racism and it also gave people a chance to express themselves because a lot of times words can't be expressed and using pictures, imagery, poetry and singing allows people to express more emotions than they can by just words. And this is basically a continuation of the art display we started way back in uh, June 1st early on to uh, show our support for the George Floyd incident after the signs were taken down over at uh near the police station we uh they gave us the ability to continue the display so we have two days worth of art displays where people had the chance to finish their art and display it so basically art evokes the spirit and uh it touches people at a different level it lets you open your mind and it's one way where you can uh pretty much connect with everybody so language sometimes is a barrier this kind of removes that barrier where images evoke the same for different people and they get the same kind of connection and we become more unified. Um, my name is Margie and I'm here because I'm really upset about the racism that has been going on in this country really ever since it started. And I, I feel that now that the, the country is just becoming to, starting to realize how bad it's been. We've been fooling ourselves, eluding ourselves into believing that, you know, things were okay and people were getting better, but it was, it's just been undercover. And so this is me and a lot of us recognizing that. It's a triptych, and, and in a way each, so it's, by that it's divided into three segments. And um, in a way it's kind of, you know, start to finish. It's, the first one is all of the hate that has been demonstrated in the killing and the hanging and the nooses and the whole bit. And the middle part, many people in cages, which is reminiscent of what's happening at the border, but it's also symbolic of what's happening just with to people of color generally. And there's an actual newspaper article headline and photo in there from um, the time when they had the, it was in the 60s, and there was a demonstration in the Olympics. You know, and the, the runners put up their fists like this when Australians supported them. Anyway, that's in the middle. And in the end is where we are going to go. And that is, you know, all of us are going to pull together. We're going to hold hands and get everybody out of that cage and make the world better. And that's, that's idealistic, but I do believe we're going to get there. So. Uh, my name is Andrew Vonderschmidt. Um, my piece is a, uh, a representation of how I see our nation. It's uh, we're all part of the same whole. Uh, a lot of people are walking around not realizing they're one finger on the whole hand, and uh, we're in a state of crisis right now. And I believe that's part of it. It's part of why we're in a state of crisis. I live in uh, uh, Sly Park. We need to move forward. I don't want to be too divisive, but we need to move forward. That means uh, enough of the divisive rhetoric. Um, enough of uh, us versus them. Um, we need to recognize what really matters. And one of the things that really does matter right now is black lives matter. It's true. Um, uh, everybody else can't matter until everyone matters equally. My name is Leslyn Shortis. Well, this image came to me as we were planning a women's retreat at my church. And um, I thought of a gathering of women and that we're not complete unless we're all gathered, unless the circle of the world is gathered. And then of course we are all one under one spirit. Um, and then I have a friend Sylvia Perry, who is a fabric artist, and we had several play dates and she let me come over and the two of us together created it. 
I, I think love is the answer, that we need to see each other and love each other, and healing comes from kindness and love and actually seeing the person. And the person may have a different colored skin, may live in a different part of our world, but we are all one. Well, my family goes back generations here, and my grandmother was always, I thought of the same things I do, that she always reached out with love and kindness and healing. And I think that's, our community has that. We're pioneers, we take care of each other, we, um, we love and, and bring each other um, uh, casseroles and attend church together. And so I think it does represent our community to be, have kindness and goodness. My name is Stephen Shortus, and it's, uh, I carve symbols. And it's a symbol of, for each of the major uh, ethnic and racial groups we as a country have not included when we said, we the people. In the center of it's a copy of the Constitution, and when you pull the Constitution out, the bottom line says, we have sinned. Uh, it's carved out of one big piece of myrtle wood, which is a, a wood found only up in the Oregon-California border. And I've been carving on it for four years, because I never had the skills to get it all done right. <laughs> And I guess finished it two weeks ago or so. I would say we need to live into the first three words of the Constitution. We the people. I'm Laura Gillard and I'm a poet. Uh, we have poetry in Placerville in El Dorado County and lots of it. So the poets are participating in social justice endeavors in the community. Uh, Moira and I belong to the Red Fox Underground Poets, which is a group that has been together for 15 years. I think since 9-11. We write poetry in general for anything, but in this case uh, it is for Black Lives Matter and uh, racism as far as arts. And if you would like to see our display over there, we are displaying the poetry of very famous black poets. Hi, I'm Maura Magnuson. I'm a Red Fox Underground poet. I have been poeming with Laura and assorted poets for a long time now. And um, we're here to support Black Lives Matter and um, to uh, really put forward the idea that we can no longer tolerate um, systemic racism. Um, and so we brought poems um, mostly from the black community. Um, I did bring a poem by Sharon Olds about Trayvon Martin. That's really powerful. I felt applied. Um, but uh, we want the black voices here to be centered. So, um, so we love the poets that we brought. So I'm Melinda Velasco, and we're here at Town Hall on July 17th for our art event. When Michael and I decided that we needed to do something about George Floyd and uh, that disaster, um, we were trying to figure out how to allow people a way to express themselves that could work like as all everybody knows in this community there's a lot of opposing viewpoints and people that don't really understand the issue and i was thinking i mean i'm a, I'm a public high school teacher so i'm always having to work within the this community and i was thinking that art might be a way that we could communicate with the with people in town on this issue without threatening them and so I thought maybe it would speak to a more spiritual and more emotional part of the people as opposed to the slogans which tend to push people away um, because they identify with words more. So uh, this, is, this is Esperanza and it, it means hope. So I, I thought this was something that, you know, for me it, it helped inspire me a bit. So it's something I'm hanging on to. And this one is just, it just, yeah. I thought that people would be able to understand maybe. Uh, Gigi Torres Velasco. Well, um, my mom is Melinda Velasco, and she was one of the people who was like setting this up. And most of the time, when she has one of those things, I end up going because most of the time I 
also agree with whatever is going on in that event or protest or whatever it is. So in this specific thing, it's for like for Black Lives Matter against racism, all that. So I think racism should end. It should not not even have existed before. It's not normal for people to think that other people don't deserve the same thing that they do. It's not fair and it's not right. And then other people, <laughs> they're like, all lives matter. Yes, we're not saying they don't. We're just saying black lives also matter and they're the ones that are in danger at this time right now. Hi, I'm Vicki Vale from Placerville. My artwork just shows the dove of peace with um, equality and justice carrying the flag and then this represents an institutional systemic racism and the bullets are headed for this bullseye because a we should have gun control and two every human on the earth should expect equality and justice um, when people say all lives matter blue lives matter blah 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 yes I agree, all lives do matter, but right now it's black lives that are in danger. When you s sent money a few years ago to save the dolphins, it did not mean you hated the whales or the sharks or anything else, but the dolphins were in danger then. And that's how I feel about our black population now. So we do believe all lives matter, but right now black lives are in danger. I would say we're way too great for this hate. We have, uh, we have enough resources, we have enough people. We just need to practice some kindness. If you are a God-fearing person, then you know He wanted you to treat everyone as you would like to be treated. And I don't think we're expressing that. We've got the news, plus we had all those swastikas go up on our windows last week downtown. And there's just so many things that we could do that aren't even, don't even cost anything, just to make everybody feel wanted and included here. My name is Robin Robinson. I'm from Placerville, but I go to school in Santa Cruz. So basically, it's just two hands, two hands up. You know, um, I think like it most applies to the um, the slogan that is like uh, "hands up, don't shoot." The idea of that. Um, we are not putting up a resistance, and yet you're killing us. And by us, I don't mean myself, of course, but the black community, particularly black men, but also black women, and particularly black trans women. Um, and the idea is that we're not aggressive, but yet you're still attacking us. Um, and uh, it's just a simple, like, red background, simple hands, because um, I think that's, that image enough is, is striking on its own. There's still a lot more work to be done. We're doing nice work here, but obviously there's still um, kind of reactionary people that uh, want to take this to a uh, violent, um, confrontational place where it doesn't have to be. Let's have conversations and let's move forward and let's stop talking over each other and really listening. Cassie Moore. So this is a piece um, for Reginald Payne. He was a man who was killed by SAC PD earlier this year and his case has not gotten very much attention. So my main focus these last few months has been bringing attention to his case so that his family can seek justice. So I have um, the gay pride flag which now includes the trans pride and black pride. Um, it's titled Unity, and then I also have a smaller hoop that says BLM for Black Lives Matter. I've been doing some um, Black Lives Matter hoops to benefit Black Lives Matter. So, um, I'd like everyone to be aware of what happened to Reggie Payne, and um, I think the sooner we can recognize the racism that is so prevalent in our country, the sooner we can work to dismantle it. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Dubose. I am here to show my art for the art display that is held um, for the Stand Against Racism. Um, this is a canvas and a portrait that I did for Brianna Taylor. Um, she is a wonderful woman that, you know, uh, she uh, fell into the system of the police brutality within these last uh, few weeks and her story really touched me so it inspired me to do a portrait of her. Um, it's not a 
traditional, realistic um, painting, but you know, it means a lot to me and I really love it. Um, I have another uh, portrait that I did for Toyin Salu, who was also an activist during this time. She also fell into a um, into the system of being sexually assaulted during the time of her being an activist for Black Lives Matter, so her story also touched me as well. And then I have um, another painting that I did of lungs, and those ones are for George Floyd, who was, who was the main person of that started all this. So I have been inspired by a lot of people um, who are not with us anymore. So, uh, you know, hopefully through my art, I can have people see that their spirits are still here. Um, I would like to tell everyone that I understand that people are probably and most likely going through a really hard time right now and they need a way to express themselves and the best way to do that, you know, if you don't know who to talk to or who to run to is to just pick up some art supplies, pick up some paper or canvas and just express yourself through art because what you're feeling inside will naturally come out in your artwork and it doesn't have to be good, it doesn't have, it's not, there's no such thing as bad art, art is art, so as long as you can express yourself that way, I think, you know, people will be more at ease during this time. So, uh, we're, a few of us have come from a local Vihara forest monastery, which is your local Buddhist monastery, just uh, off Pleasant Valley Road. And uh, we brought a piece of interactive art. And another sister started writing the names of African-American people who've been shot by police, who were just going about their daily life. So this doesn't count people who were armed or who were, you know, committing crimes or anything like that. Just ordinary people going about their daily life. And it doesn't include deaths through other means. It's just through shooting. And so here, in front of the medalist little altar, and it says Black Lives Matter on the top, and, um, and at the bottom here are names of people, African-American people, who've been shot by the police in the last six years only. It's quite a lot of names, I'm sorry to say. And the invitation is that you can come and pick up a name and read it out, and then put the name on the altar. And uh, if you want to just offer some rose petals also in memory of those people who've died. Botham Jean was eating ice cream in his living room. Betty Jones answered the door to let police in to help an upstairs neighbor. Remain Brisbane was delivering food to his children. Fernando Castillo was driving home from dinner with his girlfriend. Natasha McKenna was having a schizophrenic episode. Eric Reason was pulling into a parking spot at a chicken and fish shop. 